Erie's manufacturing company manufactures many different eddy current separators to recover metals such as aluminum, copper, and other non-ferrous metals. This video is intended to provide Erie's eddy current separator users with a service checklist for these separators. Note the equipment serial numbers on both the eddy current separator and the electrical control. Record the electrical control series number if the control was provided by Erie's. Reference them in any correspondence with Erie's. Verify proper feed and good spread of material to the separator. This shows non-uniform feed across the width, which greatly reduces separation efficiency, as well as uniform feed, which produces the best separation results. Verify proper mounting, limiting excessive vibration to the eddy. Check splitter adjustment and wear. The splitter angle can be adjusted by rotating its handle. Its length can be changed by adjusting the position of the extension plate. To do this, loosen the bolts on the slotted areas of the splitter. Slide the extension up or down and retighten the bolts. Proper splitter adjustment is essential for good separation efficiencies. This should be the first thing to check when separation efficiencies have reduced for any reason. Check for and remove any metal particles stuck to the belt. If metals continue to stick to the belt, they could become hot and burn through the belt over time. Verify magnetic separator operation and performance to reduce the amount of ferrous metal introduced to the eddy. This is important because many eddy rotor designs could be damaged by excessive amounts of ferrous metals. The rotor shell must be checked daily for any metallic particles stuck to the outside surface. This is done by turning the machine off, locking and tagging the electrical control, and rotating the rotor shell by hand to view the entire circumference. Remove any foreign matter immediately. Serious damage to the rotor shell and belt will occur if cleaning is not done on a regular basis. Verify rotor RPM and direction of rotation. Most eddy current rotors travel in the same direction as the conveyor belt. Verify belt speed and observe the tension of the belt. Over tension on the belt will cause the shell to rub on the rotor. Check for and remove debris buildup on and around the motors, as well as on the splitter and discharge chutes. Check for and patch holes and worn spots on the conveyor belt. Check the conveyor belt for holes, tears, and cuts that go all the way through. Patch immediately as fine materials will go through to the shell and cause severe damage. Worn areas of the belt should also be repaired to prevent eventual formulation of holes. A belt repair kit is available from Erie's. The ECS is furnished with a urethane conveyor belt with cleats and sidewalls. Most rips, punctures, cuts and tears can be quickly repaired with the belt repair kit that includes a heat gun, urethane, fabric, tools, clamps, instructions and plastic case. Adjust side guides and brushes for minimum clearance to the conveyor belt. Plastic guides a quarter inch. Remove any material buildup in the side guide brushes, if fitted. Observe and adjust conveyor belt tracking if necessary. Do not over tighten. To track the belt, loosen these two bolts and then using a wrench or socket, move the belt take up bolt as shown. To move the belt toward you, loosen the take up. To move the belt away from you, tighten the take up. Check the feeder tray, if any, for material buildup and clean as required. Check the deflection on the feeder tray. Material buildup in the tray can cause over deflection and damage to the feeder. Verify rotor bearing and tail pulley bearings lubrication and frequency. Verify gear reducer oil level. We are pointing to the oil fill and oil level holes on the reducer. Check shivs and V-belts. Check for shiny spots on belts and shivs, which indicate belt slip. Tension belts as necessary. If frays or splits in belts from wear or rubbing occur, replace belts as required. Check electrical connections, which make them loose due to vibration. Check magnetic attraction at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock across the width of the rotor with a piece of metal. This only applies for a concentric rotor. Eccentric rotors would only need to be checked around 12 o'clock. Caution! Strong magnetic fields are present, so perform this check carefully to prevent injury. Check temperature on inner and outer bearings. 
high temperatures can indicate a bearing starting to fail. In general, if bearing temperatures are 80 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient temperature, contact Erie's for consultation and possible bearing replacement. Utilize the Erie's Belt Repair Kit to repair any holes or tears in the conveyor belt of the eddy current separator.